All right, take your Bibles and we're going to start in kind of doing a subject study right now, taking a break off Revelation to explain some things about the devil. We get and study the devil. I mean, that's uh, you ought to know your adversary, and you ought to know some things about him. A lot of people take the devil too lightly. They don't understand things. In Revelation chapter 9, where we're at, we had Apollyon coming out of the pit. I showed last week about the man of sin becoming the son of perdition. And if you was here last week, I ended showing you that there's a satanic trinity in the time of the tribulation with the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. Now, uh, what we're going to look at today will be that trinity. I had some folks ask about it, so I'm going to go into more detail on that. And now the Trinity, I had a fella call me several weeks back, well, it was a while back, and he was asking me about the Trinity. He said, can I ask you a question? I'm like, sure. He goes, if you're pastor, and then he starts running this verse and starts arguing about before I can even answer him about why the Trinity is false. He didn't want to answer a question. He wanted to debate on the Trinity and prove to me why it wasn't true. Well, I was alone watching the two little ones had no patience and just hung up on them. He called me back and said, I'm appalled at your ignorance, so I hung up on him again. I just I had no patience with that. So if you want to learn something about the Satanic Trinity, pay attention. If you want to argue with me, well... There's another time for that, and right now you're going to have to have some patience with me because I'm not ready to argue at the moment. It's going to take me a while before I'm back to that stage, but I'm just not there. The Trinity is, there's three trinities to study in the Bible. That's uh, groups of three. You want to study the Trinity of God, which is God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then the Trinity of Man, which is body, which is going to match the Son, soul, spirit, and then the Satanic Trinity. So we're going to look at that one in detail today. And that's going to be the dragon, Satan, the beast, the body, False prophet, the spirit. All right, now let me show you all three trinities in the Bible real quickly. Take your Bible. First of all, let's look at the Trinity of God. Your best verse to look at that. We're not going to study this, but I'm going to just give you one quick verse on it. Uh, go to First John chapter five. First John chapter five. Look at verse 7. Now some of your new versions will take and attack this verse. Some completely remove it. But in 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, you see the Trinity of God. And what they'll do is they'll take verse 8 and they'll make two verses out of it and get rid of verse 7. That's what you'll see sometimes in newer versions. That's a corruption that Satan led them to do. But uh, look at verse 7, it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. So you're not worshiping three different gods, you're worshiping one God who manifests Himself in three different ways. Just like a man is one person with a body, a soul, and a spirit. Now, God is a trinity that manifests Himself in three ways. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Alright, the word there in the verse is capital W. It's a name that's given. It's not the word. It's the word. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you look at the same author, John, and go to the book of John, John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word 
was God. Amen. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Right. So that's the Word. And then, later in the passage, in John chapter 1, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, as the glory of the only begotten of the Father. So that's the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Word. So the verse here is showing that God the Father, God the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit are one. Now, take your Bible and turn to Genesis. Genesis chapter... In this trinity of God, He makes man in His image. So He makes man a trinity. Look at Genesis chapter 1 and look at verse 26. Genesis chapter 1 and look at verse 26. And notice when man's made, he's made in the image of God, which means he's made in a trinity. And look what God says. And God said, let us... He didn't say, let me. He said, let us. That's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All three of which was partaker in the creation. Saying, let us make man in what? Our image. So what does he do? Not only does he make them physically in the image of God, but he makes them a trinity. Take your Bible and turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and look at verse 23. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, and look at verse, yeah, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's the three parts of man. He has a body, he has a soul, and he has a spirit. Your body, when it dies, it's flesh. It goes to the grave, it corrupts. The soul goes to heaven, and the spirit returns to God. If you're saved. If you're saved. Now, if you're not saved, your soul goes to hell. Uh, The rich man says, and hell, he lifted up his eyes being in torment. His eyes? Now, was that his body? They say, well, the the body goes to hell when it goes to... uh, The man goes to hell when he goes to the grave. No, grave is not hell. Hell is a lake of fire. It says in death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. It's a place of torment. That's not just a grave. The soul, you have a body, you have a soul, and you have a spirit. You're made in the image of God. Now each one of those is a study all in itself, and that's a Bible doctrine and a Bible study. That's not something that's just made up. That is a Bible doctrine. And if somebody denies the doctrine that the Son and the Father are one, and the Son is God, Thomas knelt down before Jesus Christ and said, My Lord and my God. Well, if Jesus Christ wasn't God, He was a dirty, rotten rascal who let Thomas worship Him. But He was God in the flesh. And He was just as worthy to receive that worship as anyone. When a man denies God, denies that Jesus Christ was God in the flesh, He has the spirit of this one. It's the spirit of Antichrist. We're going to get into that. Now this is the one we study today. The trinity of the devil. Now, we're in the book of Revelation, so we're going to try and understand some things we see in Revelation. First of all, let's look at the satanic trinity. Turn to Revelation chapter 16. Revelation chapter 16 and look at verse 13. Did I pray? Don't study the devil without praying. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. (laughs) Lord, I pray that you'll take and be with the services this morning. I pray that you'll bless them. I pray that you'll give us clearness of mind. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Show us things from your word. Show each and every individual here the truths in your word. Help the word of God to speak to their hearts. And uh, just to increase them in their faith. Increase them in their knowledge in your word. Help them to always have faith in your word. And take a stand on it. And to believe it and not doubt it. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen. Revelation chapter 16. Revelation chapter 16. And look at verse 
13. Revelation 16, 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. So you got three individuals here, but these three individuals are linked together. And they're all a different form of Satan working. Now, take your Bible and, and turn to Isaiah, the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. Now, Satan is the biggest copycat of God there is. He tries to copy God because he wants to be God. That's what his... So he's going to try to mimic everything that God does. And God gives him a certain amount of power to let him do that. All of Satan's power is permissive power. That's what you want to remember. He can do stuff that is miraculous and miracles and stuff, but it's all... That power is only given to him by God. He can take it away from him anytime he wants. All right, Isaiah chapter uh, 14. Isaiah chapter 14. And look at verse 29. Isaiah 14, 29. Rejoice not thou, whole Palestina, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken. For out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice. And his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. So you have a serpent, you have the root of the serpent, a cockatrice, that's going to be a picture of the sun. And then you have the fruit, the fruit of the spirit. Fruit of Satan is a fiery flying serpent. Three of them there. Take your Bible and turn to Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. Look at it again. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 6. The burden of the beast of the south into the land of trouble and anguish from whence come the young and old lion. Alright, the devil is a roaring lion seeking about whom he may devour. Second, the viper and fiery flying serpent. There you have the three of them. So those are in the satanic trinity. He's going to take and come in three different forms. First of all is the one that is a mimic of God the Father. This is the king over the children of pride and also the Father, which Jesus Christ said to the Pharisees, what? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. So he represents himself as a father and a king. Take your Bible and turn to Revelation chapter 12. Re- Yes, Psalm 1. The children of the devil, yes. So it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth at the seat of the scornful. Yes. Does that sum it up? Well, it doesn't quite sum it up, but uh, it's telling a man not to sit under the seat of the devil. The seat of the scorner is a man that's walking in the way of the devil. He's a child of the devil. Okay, that's Psalms 1. Righteous man is one that follows Jesus Christ. So in Psalms 1, that's the way you're going to want to look at it. You're going to look at the righteous man as the one that's following Jesus Christ, and the sinner is the one that's been enticed by the devil, sitting in the seat of his corner, letting the devil use him. So when you receive Jesus Christ, you're going to walk in the way of righteous. You're going to follow Jesus Christ. When you reject Him, you're choosing the devil. It's all your choice, whether or not you receive them or reject them. All right, now uh, take your Bible and turn to, uh, turn to Revelation chapter 12. Let's look at some things with the dragon. Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12, and look at verse 9. Revelation 12, 9. And the great dragon was cast out that old serpent. Now you read your Bible, you know that the serpent is the one that beguiled Eve, that's the devil in the garden. That old serpent, called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So you have the devil, 
and you also have angels that are cast out. Now in Revelation chapter 12, up on this chart, where are you located? Where are you located? So where in here is Revelation chapter 12? It's tribulation. At your present time, you're right here. So this is future. Now what does that tell you? That tells you where is the habitation of the devil right now as the dragon? In the, in the, sec- in the heaven. Second heaven. He's in the deep. Now uh, this, is, this is something scientists hasn't caught up with yet. They're trying to make telescopes to see, find. They're looking for water because water is a source of life. They can find a planet with water. They find life. Well, the first time they find water, they're going to find life, and it's not life they want to find. Take your Bible and now look at Job chapter 26. Job chapter 26 and look at verse 13. Job chapter 26. Now he's the old serpent, right? Job 26. Look at verse 13. By his spirit he hath garnished the heavens, his hand hath formed what? The crooked serpent. It's the old serpent, the crooked serpent. Now, look at Job, I mean Isaiah 27. So here's the crooked serpent, Isaiah 27. Lord made him. I'll show you something about the devil here. Isaiah 27, 1. In that day the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan. Who? Leviathan. The piercing, what? Serpent. Even Leviathan, the what? Crooked serpent. That old serpent. And he shall slay the what? Dragon that is in the sea. Alright, so he's a dragon and he's a serpent. And he's in the sea and the Lord made him. The crooked serpent. Some can't figure out what Job 41 is talking about. They say, oh, it's a crocodile. Take your Bible, turn to Job 41. Now, Job 41 shows you the power and might of the devil. Job chapter 41. Now, you put these verses together, you know what Job's talking about. It's talking about the dragon, the devil. Job 41. Canst thou draw out who? Leviathan with an hook, or his tongue with a cord, which lest now. Now I'm not going to read the... You all go back and read Job 41 and 42. It describes the devil and the things about him. Now look at the last verse in Job 41. It says, He beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. So... If you're proud, if you're a child of pride, if you're proud, he's a king over all the children of pride. You will never find one time in your King James Bible where the word pride or proud is used in a good context. Right, right. Not once. Not once. The Bible says God resisteth the proud but giveth grace unto the humble. Not one time will you find it. So uh, for a man to take and uh, get saved, you know what he has to do? He's got to humble himself. He has to say, Lord, I'm not righteous. You are. I'll receive your righteousness. I'll quit trusting in my own righteousness. You know what put pe- puts pe- most people in hell? It's not the fact that they've sinned. It's the fact that they think they're still good enough to get to heaven without Christ. All men are sinners. So that puts us all toward hell. But you know why you reject Jesus Christ? Because you don't think you're that bad of a sinner. You're too proud of yourself. You need to quit thinking so highly of yourself and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Put your faith in Jesus Christ alone. Alright, so he's the father of all the children of pride. He's the dragon. Alright, the dragon, he's a king. And he's a, in a John 8, 44, it's where he tells the Pharisees that they're of their father the devil and the lust of their father they will do. So, that is the dragon. 
The dragon's habitation is in the third heaven. He represents the is in the second heaven. I'm sorry. He was cast out of the third heaven when he was when it says in Isaiah chapter 14 it says, "How art thou fallen from heaven, Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cast down?" So the devil has stages of falls that he goes through. His first fall was way back in eternity when he was created, became proud, and tried to be God, and he was cast out of the third heaven. His habitation now is the second heaven. He will be cast out in Revelation chapter 12 and, and the tribulation time period. When that happens, he knows his time is but short on the earth. So right now, he can go to and fro from the earth, as he did in the book of Job. He's traveling back and forth, but his habitation is in the third heaven. I mean, I keep saying that, the second heaven. The second heaven. You have three heavens. You have where the birds fly, you have outer space, and then you have the third of heaven where God's throne is. So the dragon represents is the copycat of the father. He's the father's copycat. All right, he's going to copycat the father. Then you have the beast. The beast, this is the one that we refer to as the Antichrist. As we studied it last week, he's the son of perdition. Uh, during Christ's time, he is represented by Judas Iscariot, who was a devil, and then the devil enters into him. What is Jesus Christ a representation of? He's a, he represents the Father. He's God manifested in the flesh. What does it mean? He means That means that Jesus Christ was the physical form of God that you could see to manifest God to you. Uh, take your Bible and let's look at uh, Jesus Christ representing the Father in the flesh. Take your Bible and turn to First. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. 1 Timothy 3, 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Now everything that's described there is Jesus Christ. But it says God was manifest in the flesh. So Jesus Christ was God being manifested to the world in the flesh. Now they didn't receive Him. But He's still referred to as what? The man, Christ Jesus. So He was a man, yet He was God in the flesh. He was a physical man though. That's the way the beast will be. Now take your uh, Bible and turn to... Let's take and look at them. Let's turn to, first of all, let's turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Satan's power and abilities go far beyond what he's given credit for. Alright, let's uh, pick up verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of what? Satan. In all power and signs and and lying wonders. So uh, that's going to be, now if you look back, you look back up to verse 3, it says, Falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. So we showed how the Antichrist in the tribulation, that was a study last week, he's the man of sin, he receives a deadly wound in the middle. Apollyon comes up, which means perdition out of the bottomless pit, enters into that man, and he becomes the son of perdition. He is a man with the devil inside of him. He's the devil incarnated. So that's what you're dealing with with the beast in the tribulation. He's a man on this earth, but he's the devil in the flesh. He's the devil in the flesh. Now, uh, notice how he copycats the Lord Jesus Christ. He comes, first of all, he comes to do the work of his Father. Uh, Look at 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. 
Now what did Jesus Christ claim to be doing? The works of His Father. Alright, so and if you want a cross-reference for that, look at John chapter 4, verse 34. That's what Jesus Christ does. He's to manifest His Father. Now what, what's the works of the beast? Take your Bible and turn to Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. And look at verse 10. It says, Fear not of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So, who casts them into prison? Well, in the verse, the devil does. But in the tribulation, who's the one responsible for casting him into prison and putting him to death? It's the beast. Now notice how the beast is attributed as the devil when he's doing the works. Yeah, put two and two together here. You see, they're all the same. All three of them is the devil working. He's just working in three different ways. Now, take your Bible and turn to... um, He manifests His Father in the flesh. Look at Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. And look at verse 18. Revelation 13, 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of what? A man. So he's in the flesh. He's a man. He's a fleshly man. And his number is 603 score and 6. I had an interesting deal at work a while back. How many of you, last month, Friday, fell on the 13th? Well, this woman got in a crash with her vehicle on Friday the 13th. It was a brand new Jeep, and the odometer was 666. I got to fix that dumb thing. I'm <laughs> like, man, this car's cursed. <laughs> you know, I'm not superstitious, but that was just a little bit too much. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> just too much. <laughs> John chapter 6. Look at John chapter 6. Look at verse 70. John chapter 6, verse 70. Now, uh, we took in a. Uh, Gave you these verses last week. I'll give them to you again. You see Judas Iscariot. John chapter 6. Look at verse um, 70. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve? And one of you is what? A devil. Now, look at John chapter 13. John chapter 13. And look at verse 2. And supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, now having put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. So not only is he a devil, but the Satan influences him and gets him to do it. That's his copycat of the son. Judas Iscariot is referred to as the son of perdition. The son of perdition means to destroy. The destroyer is the devil in the Bible. So he's the son of the destroyer. That is the representation there. Now, just like uh, Jesus Christ, he is worshipped. Both he uh, directs people to worship the dragon and to worship himself. What does Jesus Christ do? He directs people to worship the Father but He allows people to worship Him. Look at Revelation chapter 13. Notice how the devil copycats this with the beast. It's just a copycat. Revelation chapter 13. Look at verse 2. I mean verse 4. Revelation 13, 4. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast... You know what Jesus Christ said of the Father? All power is given unto me. The Father gave him all power. Who gives the beast the power? The dragon. You see how it's just a copycat? He's just copying the Lord. That's all he's doing. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? 
All right? So they worship both of them. Now, that's the beast. He's the second part of the satanic trinity. He's going to be a representation of the dragon in the flesh. Then you have the false prophet. Which, false prophet's kind of a weird guy. He lo- it looks like he's actually a man in the tribulation. But the spirit of the false prophet is the spirit of Antichrist that goes out and deceives. And that spirit is like the Holy Spirit. It goes into all the false prophets. It's, not ju- it's a multiple spirit that goes from one false prophet to another. You say, how does Satan have that ability? I don't know, but he does. I'm going to show it to you. Uh, Take your Bible and turn to, first of all, let's look at the false prophet. Look at Revelation chapter 13. Now, is the Holy Spirit in each and every Christian that's saved? Yes. Yeah. So you're sealed till the day of redemption by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes. He is one individual, but he is in multiple people. Right. Right? Right? Amen. Okay. Now, we do not understand the spiritual realm. Plain and simple. You do not understand the spiritual realm. The Bible will show us some things about the spiritual realm, but we don't understand it. We don't get that. All right. Now there are certain abilities that Satan has been given. We will not get it. But we can see it. And this is where people take Satan too lightly because they do not see his complete ability. All right. Now, take your... Uh, Bible and look at um, Revelation chapter 13. Let's look at the false prophet. Revelation chapter 13 and look at verse uh, 11. Revelation 13, 11. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doth great wonders, so that he make a fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of man, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which he had the wound by a sword and did live. So his big ability is to deceive. He is the opposite of the Holy Spirit. He's referred to as the spirit of iniquity or the spirit of deception. He's in that spirit of Antichrist. Now this is a spirit that works to deceive the entire world. Now if it was just one spirit, that thing is moving fast. He's just moving fast. But look at, take your Bible and turn to, I want to show you something about the devil. That a lot of people miss. Turn to 1 Kings chapter 22. 1 Kings chapter 22. I want to show you something. 1 Kings chapter 22. This is the lying spirit. 1 Kings chapter 22 and verse 21. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. Now the question was, and the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab they may fall at Rabbi Gilead? So, one says on this matter, one says on this other matter, and then a spirit steps forward and says, I'm going to persuade him. Verse 22. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit. Now, who's the father of all lies? Satan. This is the devil. This is the devil here. I will be a lying spirit. In the mouth of what? All All his prophets. Now ain't that something? Mm -hmm. The devil wasn't just going into one man and speaking through him. He was going into all of them. How does he do that? Oh, but that's what it says. Satan is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And you think that because you're small and insignificant that he has no interest in you, you better be careful. Your adversary, your adversary, the devil, walketh about 
as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Don't you ever think that you're not going to have your battles with the devil. Now I know there's a different thing about devils, which we refer to as demons, which that's a different thing. But he is the prince of the devils, Beelzebub. And he is your adversary. So don't ever think that the devil is not going to come knocking on your door. He will. And probably more than once, he'll probably mess with you your entire life. Now you say that's a sobering thought. It should be. Because it shows you the battle that you're in. You say, how do I deal with it? The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. But what does the verse say before then? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So you have to be humbled under God. And then in God's power, God will help you resist them and He will flee from you. You're not going to do it in your own might. Alright? So the false prophet is the spirit of deception that goes through. That's also referred to as the spirit of Antichrist or the spirit of deception. Look at 1 John chapter 4. We're going to close with this. 1 John chapter 4 and look at verse 3. 1 John 4, 3. Now there's many false religions out there with many false prophets and they have something in common. There's a good way to spot them. And it's right here in 1 John. 1 John chapter 4, look at verse 3. 1 John 4, 3. It says, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. This is the spirit of Antichrist. So that spirit will be in any man that does not confess that Jesus Christ was come in the flesh. That's the deity of Christ. God manifested in the flesh. That's what it's referring to. Take a look at 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2 verse 18. Little children is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby ye know that it is the last time. You know what you have today? You have many people coming up and saying, Jesus Christ wasn't God. He was a lesser God. That's the spirit of Antichrist. That's a false religion. Do not follow that one. Do not follow that belief. Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. And if you're going to worship God, you will worship Jesus Christ. He was given a name above every name that every knee should bow and every name should confess to the glory of God the Father. You want to give God the Father glory, you give Jesus Christ glory. You take Jesus Christ's glory away, you are not glorifying the Father. This one will point you to a false Christ. Anybody that denies this one is pointing you to a false Christ. All right, now that's something about the devil. You should know those things. He's your adversary. A good soldier always studies his enemy. Know some things about your enemy. Your adversary. All right, let's take a break there and we'll pick up with the preaching service on the next service.